Okay, hello. Welcome to our joint press conference on uh, React EU. As you know, uh, European Parliament and Council concluded negotiations today on deploying uh, additional EU resources and measures to mitigate the uh, effects of the COVID-19 crisis. We have uh, with us now representatives of the European Parliament's negotiating team, the German Presidency and the European Commission. Interpretation is provided in English, French, German and Bulgarian. Uh, journalists will be able to ask questions following the opening statements. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Yunus Omarje, the chair of our uh, Committee on Regional Development. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for taking part today at this press conference. I'm very pleased this afternoon to be uh, here together with uh, Konstantin Krehl and Andrei Novakov, we can announce that we have found an agreement between the co-legislators on the REACT EU program. I could just state very rapidly that this uh, negotiation process was exemplary. The institutions, the European Parliament, the Council and the Commission have uh, been acting at the highest level of responsibilities to try and provide the response that the COVID pandemic requires. REACT EU is a program that is hotly awaited in all of Europe's regions to try and attenuate the impact of the COVID crisis to allow us to fight against poverty, which, as you'll be aware, has been growing exponentially everywhere in Europe. And we also want to start the relaunch I would like to thank the European Commission for taking the initiative. This is an initiative that was very much desired by the European Parliament. The co-rapporteurs, the Regi Committee, the Parliament has worked under exceptional conditions, working uh, extremely rapidly to ensure that these funds can be mobilised as quickly as possible. But this afternoon, what I also wanted to express to you was our concern because we're very concerned about developments within the Council. The European Parliament has found an agreement together with the Council on the rule of law. We have also got an agreement with the Council on the MFF and on the uh, NGEU. We are hoping that as events progress, that we will be able to ensure that these funds that are so awaited uh, to start the recovery and to respond to the COVID crisis, these have to arrive as rapidly as possible in all of Europe's regions. So that's just in a nutshell what I wanted to say to you. I'd like to thank everyone once again for their spirit of responsibility and for the uh, very widespread sense of compromise given the state of emergency. And I think that this afternoon we can all be pleased with the agreement that's been reached. I will now hand the floor to Andrei Novakov, a co-rapporteur. He will be taking the floor by video conference. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I would like to... Um, speak to my gratitude regarding the German presidency, Commissioner Fene Ferreira, who was an honest broker, as well as our colleague uh, Constance Kronenskoye, uh, with whom we worked very well on this um, file. I would like to thank everyone who worked on this file, who managed to turn REACT EU into an actual help for everyone on the ground. What is the result from our work on the regulation? The member states will be able to use uh, the funds from 1st of February 2020. This means that the governments can cover existing already made uh, expenses uh, in REACT EU. At the end of, 2003, uh, of 2023 will be uh, the uh, end date, not 22 as the initial uh, 
proposal was. So we would be able to use the funds very, in a very targeted manner. The European Commission will only work within 15 uh, days for approval. So the funds can go where the fallout of the pandemic is. What else can we count on within uh, REACT? Different instruments for the SMEs, support for the entrepreneurs, self-employed. I realize, however, that the European instruments are not always intelligible, understandable. So uh, we will tell you how Bulgaria will use those funds. We will use these funds through existing operational programs, so the, the bureaucracy will be minimized. For example, operational program Human Resource will support medical staff, self-employed through region, regions and growth operational program. There will be consumables for labs and hospitals. Through the competitiveness operational program, uh, we will help the SMEs that did uh, endure a lot of the fallout of uh, the crisis. Uh, the operational program education will help the distance learning in uh, schools in Bulgaria. The specific examples will show us how concretely we can use those funds and we will realize how the cohesion policy helps uh, recover from crisis. The cohesion policy saves lives. So this uh, now the responsibility lies within the council that needs to overcome these blockages in, in order not to delay. Delaying these funds will be paid by the citizen and the system. And I believe the German presidency will do everything that is necessary. One more time, thank you to all the colleagues that in this bleak period, this heavy, difficult period for everyone in, on our continent, we did not give up. We did our duty. We did it on time. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, cher. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to Constanze Kreil. She's the co-rapporteur on React EU. Well, thank you very much indeed. I'd like to also express my thanks. And in particular, I'd like to thank the German Council Presidency and the European Commission I think it's great that we were able to negotiate this as quickly as we did and to come up with a good outcome. And I think that uh, it's important now for Poland and Hungary to hear this message and to uh, avoid and avert any blocking of these funds. Just to add to what Andrei Novakov said, there are a few points that are really stand out as extremely important for me. First of all, the social components that the European Parliament fought for very hard. It's important and essential that employees um, can benefit from short-term working arrangements and that uh, those who are self-employed and perhaps have no income at this time are given support. Young people, too, who are seeking employment need to be able to get access to funding under REACT EU. Now, something that was very I was pleased to see in this final outcome was that in the border regions the funds will be available too. We all were able to see the uh, sheer um, damage that was done to um, belief in Europe in those border regions when it came to believing in cooperation at, at the European level. So I just wanted to highlight the fact that those cross-border areas too will be able to benefit from REACT EU funds. And another this was another key point that the Parliament uh, defended, the idea of a cl greener Europe, climate protection. This too will be enabled by the funds. The environmental aspects, as far as we're concerned, are, are of utmost importance. It's very, very important that we implement uh, this policy priority throughout all of the instruments in cohesion policy. So if we're going to invest in things in order to overcome the COVID 
COVID-19 crisis and the pandemic, then the outcome should be not only that we are in a stronger place economically speaking, but that we're also in a better place environmentally speaking. And I think that's an important message for citizens, for the regions. So once again, allow me to say a big thank you to all the parties involved for showing a spirit of compromise for enabling us to come up with a solid, good uh, text that will enable uh, funding to flow early next year with retroactive action. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. I'll now give the floor to the representative of the uh, German Council Presidency, Peter Hartmeier. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, the German Presidency is very grateful uh, that the European Parliament and the Council have arrived at a political agreement on REACT EU today. Uh, we have reached this agreement uh, within just a few weeks uh, of negotiations in a true spirit of trust and compromise between the co legislators, and this sends out a strong signal. REACT EU will now be the first new instrument to be rolled out as part of the next generation EU initi initiative that was agreed upon by the European Council in July 2020. Uh, I address my special thanks uh, to the chairman of the Regi Committee, to the co-rapporteurs, Madame Constanze Krehl, Mr. Andrei Novakov, uh, and who steered the negotiations on EP side efficiently and compromise minded. Commissioner Ferreira and her team uh, supported both Parliament and Council very effectively to find appropriate results. And that made it possible that we are here today and can say REACT EU is done. The procedure to formally adopt the proposal will follow in the com coming weeks. I am confident that REACT EU can enter into force before the end of the year. The prompt adoption of REACT EU will help deliver support to regions and territories quickly, which was already mentioned by the chairman and also the co rapporteurs and will help prevent the widening of disparities as a result of the pandemic. REACT EU will provide exceptional additional resources to member states and regions to be used for bolstering the economy and jobs in the worst affected regions and preparing a green, digital and resilient recovery. The resources will be made available in 2021 with an amount of 37.5 billion euros and in 2022 with another 10 billion euros. Uh, it will serve as a bridge from the emergency COVID-19 response to the next phase, which will consist of work to repair the economy in the long term. In substance, REACT EU will primarily support health services and SMEs, the preservation of jobs and job creation, particularly for people in vulnerable situations youth employment and access to social services. Member states may also increase allocations for programs for the most deprived. I think it is also important to see the REACT EU proposal as one part of the much larger cohesion package which will provide the funding and the legal framework for the next financial period starting in 2021. For the German presidency, the negotiations of the cohesion package are a top priority. Uh, it is our clear ambition to finish the political negotiations on all six regulations of the cohesion package under our term. This is of utmost importance for the European regions, which need a swift implementation of new programs <coughs> to ensure rapid absorption of funds, not only for recovery from the crisis, but also for long-term investments in the digital and green transition. It is also very positive that much progress has been made in the negotiations on all the regulations of the cohesion package, which we have still ahead of us. Nevertheless, there are still difficult open issues, and more work has to be done in the coming weeks. 
but we can conclude the negotiations successfully if we continue to work in a spirit of trust and pragmatism, and I am confident that we achieve a fair and balanced compromise. In this regard, I am counting on the constructive support of our colleagues in the European Parliament and of Commissioner Ferreira so that we will achieve this common goal together. The motto of the German EU presidency is Together for Europe's Recovery. This is particularly true for cohesion policy. And this is precisely the spirit that will enable us to wrap up the negotiations on the cohesion package before Christmas. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I'll now give the floor with great pleasure to Elisa Ferreira. She's the Commissioner for Regional Policy. And I would personally like to thank you for the role that you've played, Commissioner. You've fully done your job by helping to uh, get an agreement between the co-legislators. Uh, I am, I am uh, extremely pleased with the, the agreement that we have reached, in fact. Um, I think this is the moment where um, citizens of Europe wait for good news, and this is good news. This is good news because it is uh, the first cohesion uh, text that legal text that is finished as uh, the presidency and uh, the parliament have um, mentioned and it is uh, the first instrument that uh, will be uh, financed through the new proposal from commission and that has been agreed by uh, council by council and parliament in principle in relation to the um, going to the market for extra financing capacity to support the recovery it is also very important to note that uh, this comes as a natural prolongation of what we already did and we did it uh, since April. In April, we had the top of initiative from the Commission and the Council and Parliament uh, agreeing on this first initiative, this emergency instrument that is called CRI, uh, in two weeks. So I will always thank uh, the Parliament and the Council for this. And, uh, Citizens, of course, uh, understood that CRI, which is now paying for masks, paying, supporting member states for masks, for small and medium companies, support for short-time labor, for, uh, for uh, ventilators, for extra, extra stuff in uh, hospitals or in health centers, needs to be prolonged. And it needs to be prolonged, and it is prolonged with this text, with REACT. So so, um, as, uh, as the presidency and uh, the parliament mentioned, uh, I think it's very important to note that uh, uh, we are all doing our utmost so that after the 1st of January we can, in fact, have another source of financing to support, to de give continuity and to have a seamless transition between the CRE instrument that already supplied 16 billion uh, of support, but not fresh support. It was a reallocation of the funds that already existed in national envelopes. And now we'll have 47.5 billion as as the um, German presidency clearly uh, uh, identified, 37.5 in 2021 and uh, the 10 billion in the next year, exactly to give continuity with similar flexibilities to support not only the continuation of the emergency support, but also the transition uh, towards a more green, a more sustainable and a more cohesive uh, and a more digital recovery for for Europe. I finish with very, very um, uh, deep and sincere thanks uh, to uh, the chair of uh, the European uh, Parliament Committee, the Regi Committee, that was extremely helpful, and rapporteurs and co-rapporteurs and shadow rapporteurs, and to the Germany presidency that, in fact, uh, made this happen and uh, made this uh, become a sign of hope and a sign 
of trust and mutual confidence in the European uh, support for our citizens and for recovery. So uh, a lot of the details have already been uh, presented by both co-legislators, so I will keep my, uh, my answers to questions that still may remain uh, from those that make our efforts known and recognized by citizens. So thank you very much to all of you uh, to react so positively to yet another Commission proposal. Thank you very much indeed, and let's listen to the questions. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Nous allons... Oui. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, we will open now the floor for, uh, for questions. Um, I see already some raised hands online. Uh, we have a few journalists connected, so please do raise your hand if you want to, uh, to ask a question. And I would like to give the floor to Angelo Di Mambro first, please. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oui. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I need a clarification. I, uh, the, the, the opening speeches were uh, quite clear to ask for, to call for um, uh, the council to overcome the blockades, uh, 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 the vetoes. Um, it, but it's, uh, it's not clear for me if this instrument is among the funds that will be blocked right now if the situation does not change. Could you please uh, give me a clarification on that? Thanks. Would like to answer, please? Madame la Commissaire. Commissioner. Thank you for our question. In fact, this is the first instrument that will be using the next generation EU. Yes, this is the, the proposal from the Commission that, uh, that needs to go, to go forward. Uh, I, would, uh, I mean, Europe has been built on consensus, not on vetoes, and so I have a strong conviction that the, the problem that we are facing now will be very, very swiftly uh, overcome on the basis uh, on <coughs> which we have built Europe. That's trust and solidarity. And this instrument is a proof of that. We are doing solidarity instruments so that we support those that were most affected by the crisis. But yes, it, is, uh, it will be financed. It is seen as being financed by the next generation instrument. instrument. Thank you. Mr. Marger, you would like... Well, as Constanze Krell rightly reminded us, the two countries, Poland and Hungary, are going to be beneficiaries. They're going to be major beneficiaries of the, the ideas that we've uh, adopted together, particularly React EU. And it's thanks to today's agreement that we can send out a signal to them. The other thing I can tell you is that this agreement on React EU shows us just how much cohesion policy is capable of acting in a time of crisis. We did it with the Cree, the Cree Plus program, and today we're doing it again with React EU. And on the whole, cohesion policy at this moment in time is absolutely central to our response as the EU to respond to this crisis and the recovery. Mr. Hetemeyer, you wanted to add? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to underline what uh, what uh, Chairman Omaji has said right now. It is true that uh, the financing of React EU is dependent on the agreement of the MFF and the NGEU. Uh, that is true. Uh, most of the uh, 
files and uh, regulations are dependent on that. But what we have today is a clear signal of hope and a clear incentive uh, for all others who are responsible for negotiations on other files uh, to follow the example uh, and uh, find compromise solutions. And uh, I think that is the important message of today. Uh, the EU can act and can agree with its institutions on a concrete file that is uh, among those which are covered by the MFF negotiations. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Then we can take the next question. Uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Pascal Hansens. Pascal, tell la parole. Oui, bonjour. Uh, plus... Thank you. I have a number of questions. First of all, on the agreement reached today, when it comes to checks and controls over the disbursement of these REACT EU funds, will they be more light touch, simplified checks? And if so, does this mean there will be greater risks? linked to the proper use of the funds. That would be my first question. Uh, and I have others. Should, can I ask all of them? Yes, you could ask all of your questions, says Mr. Omaji. Um, well, OK, my second question, similar to what was raised by a colleague on the MFF, Multiannual Financial Framework, and the Next Generation EU Fund. Is there a genuine risk now that there may be a blocking of the allocation of those funds? And if so, does the Commission have a plan to overcome this with some kind of bridging fund? Thank you very much. And I'd now like to give the floor to Constance Kreil to respond to that first question. Thank you. That's a very good question. It's perfectly justified. REACT EU will indeed be a low red tape procedure with less bureaucracy. Of course, there will be checks, but I think they can be compare, comparable. If you compare them with previous controls uh, mechanisms, they'll be much simpler, much more streamlined and much closer to citizens. So I think that's a good thing because all participants in these negotiations were very, very keen to see the funds reach the people who need them as quickly as possible. When it comes to the distribution key itself, the Commission will probably be able to comment on that more. Of course, the criteria uh, relating to the impact uh, felt as a result of the coronavirus pandemic will play a part, but other criteria as well. And I think the member states themselves will also need to set certain um, priorities themselves when it comes to the allocation of funds. We're not going to dictate anything to them. We will simply be providing some guidance to member states. The final say uh, when it comes to the f funding allocation does lie with the member states or the regions themselves, and that's quite right. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Well, that was a question addressed to you. Uh, oui, merci. Um, il y a... Yes, thank you very much. Well, I think that Constanza Creel has really uh, already touched upon this subject. There's a great deal of simplification in all the procedures. These are emergency m mechanisms. And we're continuing with our efforts uh, towards simplification. And uh, that's the solution that the Parliament and Council have also been moving towards, to try and find a simpler way of managing the funds. So there are no major changes uh, compared to the CRE, which we, it was the uh, previous situation. As for Plan B, well, personally, I don't think that we should uh, try and envisage that. I don't think it's correct to prepare a Plan B. Rather, I think we need to bring uh, our proposals to a successful conclusion, because that's uh, the uh, way we can get a success for Europe as a whole. Of course, there's still a lot of work to be done. 
between now and the end of the year. As the MEPs who've spoken have uh, already said, I think uh, Andrei Novikov and uh, Konstantin Krehl already said this, the project that started after the 1st of February 2020 are eligible. The project can continue until 2023. And even projects which were concluded already, but are part of the response to the crisis, can be financed using this instrument. So I do believe that there is uh, ongoing work to be done together with the member states. The Commission is already in very close dialogue with all of the member states so that we can prepare the proposal that the, that the member states want uh, to see to, as to how that they can use this money in practice. I think that the text should clarify all of the doubts in the minds of the member states at this moment. Let's get down to work. And I think that the most complicated issues will be resolved and in a manner that benefits Europe and its citizens. Thank you. I believe Mr. Novakov would like to take the floor as well, please. Could you please press the speak button, Mr. Novakov? I would like to react only on the first part of the question that has been asked, just to add to what my colleague correctly said to Kurtans Kreo, that REACT-EU could use already existing operational programs in our member states, so no additional procedures that the managing authorities should learn how to deal with. So minimum requirements and uh, exactly the same standards as we use with the current existing operational programs. So no need of time to adapt to new procedures that we just uh, created. This is not the case here. We use the, the, the least uh, um, uh, consuming uh, time uh, procedure for many general authorities. So already, as soon as the REACT is signed uh, by our president and the chair of the council, uh, the funds should be on the disposal of the member states. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like just to ask the interpreters whether one more question would be possible. Okay, thank you very much. And after that, we, uh, we will uh, wrap up. Unfortunately, I would like to give the floor the last question. Please, only one question to <coughs> Vlad Maximov. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I will ask then, uh, so I'll follow my colleagues with uh, asking for a few details in terms of the timing. Even assuming the vetoes are overcome, it's going to take time to borrow the money from the markets and then get that money flowing into the member states. Even though I understand that there is retroactive eligibility starting from February this year, my question is, when will... When do you uh, foresee the pre-financing starting flowing? How much money is that for, uh, is foreseen for that? And what is uh, when is uh, the first uh, transactions to the actual member states uh, foreseen? Even assuming the veto is overcome still this year. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to react uh, very shortly and very briefly. Uh, in the first uh, three months of the next year, we can start with the, uh, distributing the money into the uh, member states. Uh, that is possible, and it is very important to again repeat that uh, it, you can use in the member states uh, the money retroactive. That means already projects uh, from the beginning of, uh, last, of this year, from uh, February this year, you can uh, finance this. That means even if the money will come only in March next year, uh, you can finance your projects uh, 
12 months uh, back. Uh, and this is uh, really very important for the regions and makes it possible that you really have your emergency support uh, there. But uh, anyway, uh, when we give today the signal that we uh, concluded react EU, then everybody knows uh, we have to wait until tomorrow and hopefully then we have no and not any more a blockade in the, in the Council from Poland and Hungary, uh, then you know that uh, we can decide this in the plenary in December if the Council gives the final okay. Uh, and uh, then it's uh, uh, from the 1st of January it's possible to work with this. And uh, no, no. Okay, a little bit later, but in the first three months of next year, it's possible. Uh, and I think this is very fast, a very fast procedure, and hopefully we can end with the rest uh, of the cohesion policy as well in such a speed. All right. Thank, thank you very much, Commissioner. You would like to add a final word? Yes. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to add, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, to, to what has been said, uh, the... Uh, and I wanted to underline the fact that uh, because we have all these instruments that will follow up on the existing ones, that doesn't mean, and the citizens are not sufficiently aware of this, that we are until then in a kind of vacuum. Because the CRI instrument is being decided every day. Every day, uh, the, the, the staff of, the, of, of the, our services from the Commission, and I'm signing the formalities so that 16 billion have already been uh, agreed, but this is uh, uh, underestimate of the amount uh, of, of money that is being transferred from the cohesion funds into this emergency um, uh, aspects and this can go on and still there is margin for the prolongation of this, of this instrument uh, because it is really very immediate and very very simple and of course those projects that have got to be uh, I mean just done the first phase or the, uh, what, what can be done uh, immediately they should not be stopped but what is left to be finished from those projects can be easily transferred into the next period of financial support between 2021-27. So what I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I want to underline is that there is no vacuum uh, in terms of uh, the support from, the, from Europe to the regions between now and then, but of course this is what guarantees, this tax is what guarantees that there is a real continuous a really prolongation and at the same time a transition into a more kind of uh, um, uh, not emergency but a kind of uh, normal cohesion policy functioning of the funds. So this is just detailed because uh, the impression that we are in a vacuum until this issue and this, uh, this money is available uh, I mean it's, it's, not, it's not true. Every day and, ma and member states go on uh, um, deciding and proposing, and there is a huge margin of manoeuvre from member states to decide where they want to spend the money that is still available in their national envelopes. And you know that the, the execution level of these funds, uh, so the margin that is available, is still quite robust. So I just wanted to underline this because uh, sometimes uh, people, uh, I mean citizens, don't understand that a lot of the support that is, uh, that is coping for the emergency needs is already uh, cohesion policy in function. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, we, uh, Mr. Hetmeyer, were you? No. no. Okay. There we go. Thank you very much. We thank the participants, our speakers, our interpreters. Thank you very much for the extra minutes you allowed us. And please have a good afternoon.